Thank, thank you, and thank you in this uh, good evening, and uh, let's make a start. Hello, everybody. I'm Mayor Patrick Hall uh, from the City of Canning. I'd like to uh, welcome you to this evening's uh, uh, AGM for electors, our annual uh, electors meeting. Uh, thank you for coming along. And it's a bit of a historic moment because we've never actually been on the road before and taken these meetings to the people, and it's about time. So I'd like to congratulate uh, Michael Littleton to my left, to your right, who is our new CEO for the City of Kenning uh, for uh, the initiative and his uh, executive. So on the right of the city's executive team and on my left here, uh, on your right, uh, is the entire City of Kenning Council. We're missing, I think, one at the moment, but uh, uh, they are your councillors. So um, uh, thank you very much. This is your meeting, not ours, and that's why the councillors are sitting off on one side. They're really here tonight uh, as uh, observers. They won't play any uh, part. My role here is just to chair tonight's meeting. I want to uh, open the meeting, which is being recorded at the moment, uh, at 6 p.m. Today is Tuesday, the 31st of January, 2023. I've got a bit of a booming voice, but can I ask, uh, can you all hear me clearly? Yes. Terrific. Okay, that's a good start. I declare the annual general meeting of electors open. We acknowledge the Wadjuk people, the traditional custodians of the land. We also pay our respects to their elders, uh, both past and present. The audio of this meeting is being live streamed on the city's website. By being present at this meeting, members of the public consent, consent <coughs> to the possibility that their voice is also being live streamed uh, to the public this evening. The purpose of this meeting is to consider and receive the annual report for 2021-2022 and to consider any other general business. This meeting is a public meeting and any information you provide this evening shall be recorded and may be publicly accessible. Statements made during this meeting are solely those of the person making them. Nothing express expressed at this meeting can be attributed to the City of Canning. The recording of this meeting must not be copied, republished or reproduced without the City's express permission. I just want to read through the procedures of the uh, meeting and they are as follows. Uh, the Mayor shall preside over the meeting in accordance with section uh, 5.30 uh, subsection 1 of the Local Government Act 1995. An elector has a right to one vote, but does not have to vote. Only electors may speak, except with the approval of the mayor, and that would need to be in exceptional circumstances. At tonight's meeting, there will be an opportunity to raise questions and motions from the floor. When addressing the meeting this evening, and you'll see that just in front of me here, there's a podium with a microphone. I'll ask you to uh, step forward to the microphone, uh, state your name and address for the recording of the minutes, and also address the meeting through the Mayor. Just introduce yourself, basically, and then start talking. Uh, the Mayor will determine questions relating to order and procedure that are not listed above. And an elector may move a motion at the meeting, which will only be considered if it has a seconder. So just to explain that, so tonight if a, mo if a motion is put, somebody would like something done in the community, the motion only uh, is put <coughs> to the vote if there is somebody in the audience that wishes to second it. And we don't have to have a seconder, it's up to you. If you don't feel that the motion uh, is something that is uh, of interest to you, uh, you don't uh, necessarily have to uh, support it. Also, when it goes to the vote, you don't have to vote. You can either vote or choose not to vote, and only electors of the City of Canning can actually vote. Motions carried at tonight's meeting are not binding on the Council, and that's important. So obviously we note the motions that will be put tonight, uh, but b having been put tonight and voted on, regardless of whether they're supported by the group of people here this evening, uh, those motions, are, Council is not bound uh, to follow uh, the, those motions. Voting is determined by a show of hand or other form of voting determined by the Mayor, and it will be a by a show of hands uh, this evening. A simple majority carries the vote, in other words, uh, uh, more versus less, if it has uh, more uh, in favour than not, it will be carried. And the minutes of this meeting will be available for inspection uh, by members of the public. Uh, and also the audio recording of this meeting will be placed on the city's website uh, in the next day or so. Uh, as far as attendance this evening, I have had no apologies. Thank you, councillors, for your attendance this evening. Uh, Councillor Sarah Sabiri has joined us while I was doing uh, that short prelude. Uh, good evening. 
Um, at item three this evening, the receiving of the minutes of the annual general meeting of electors held on the 2nd of February 2022. <coughs> uh, given that many of you would not have been at that meeting, there's no need for a motion to be put and for the matter to be passed. Um, I will actually accept that those minutes will be received by the meeting uh, through the chair. I'm going to play a short video in, the, uh, in a moment uh, just to talk about some of the highlights, but just a few short words from me. The past year has seen increased attention on a number of core activities which I am certain will hold us in good stead for the future. Council has remained focused on returning the City of Canning's finances to a stronger and more sustainable position and this has meant a renewed commitment to the principles detailed in the long-term financial plan which was adopted by Council in 2021. While the long-term financial plan has required moderate increases to rates, these increases are not keeping pace with the current inflationary pressures being experienced by Council on many fronts. And this is a challenge that we must simply accept and deal with, and it's uh, something that uh, affects all of us. And I don't see any change in the foreseeable future. You've asked us to reduce our costs and to find savings, and we have, and we'll continue to do so. Despite the current financial difficulties presented by a tightening economy, I am pleased to say that we've been able to maintain our investment in essential community services and to provide investment to improve and enhance our neighbourhood. And this wonderful community centre here in the heart of Bentley is one fine example of the City of Canning listening to its residents and investing uh, your rate uh, money uh, responsibly and in places where it's most needed. We continue to enjoy an enviable lifestyle and world-class amenities. Yet still somehow Canning remains one of the lowest rating local governments across the Perth metropolitan area. We certainly have much to be grateful for. Finally, on behalf of the community, may I extend my sincere thanks and appreciation to the City of Canning's Chief Executive Officer, Michael uh, Littleton, and also to his staff for their dedication, and also acknowledge the wonderful commitment and contribution made by our councillors during this past year. Thank you very much, councillors. Um, please, I'll ask you just to sit back and enjoy a very short video showing why the City of Canning is now so highly regarded as a local government. The video will be on the City's website for those unable to join us live here this evening. It'll only be a few minutes, I hope you enjoy it. Thank you, staff. Hi everyone, I'm Mayor Patrick Hall from the City of Canning. Welcome. Across our wonderful city and first southeastern suburbs, we are fortunate to have a wide range of amazing facilities, parks, reserves, services and events that our community really does enjoy. With a growing population of over 100,000 residents, we continue in pursuit of our vision to make Canning a welcoming and thriving city. This 2021-2022 financial year was filled with a range of fantastic projects and initiatives that will benefit our community for years to come. Let us take you through some of those highlights. We officially opened the Hillview Intercultural Community Centre, the first intercultural centre in Perth's Southeast Corridor. Our Ranger and Community Safety Team took home 2021 WA Ranger Team of the Year, launched a dedicated community safety portal and facilitated a homelessness forum to bring together key agencies and service providers. The Canning Vale Food Value Add Precinct report was completed and launched among a host of over 100 representatives from industry, government and academia. The city's second Women in Business Forum was held in February 2022 with local business owner Megan Del Borello of Emerson. We delivered a range of new facilities for local families, including a Canning Vale Oval pump track and a range of playground upgrades right across the city. Burrandar Boulevard streetscape enhancement and upgrade of Burrandar South and Middle Oval's sports lighting. Climate Clever Neighbourhoods Project, a first of its kind pilot research project was rolled out. We continue to deliver the Canning City Centre Regeneration Program with the commencement of three projects being Cecil Avenue East, Lake Street Extension and the Lake Street Urban Stream and much more. On behalf of the community, may I extend my sincere thanks to the City of Canning's Chief Executive Officer and his staff for their dedication and also acknowledge the contribution and commitment made by our councillors during this past year. Thank you. To find a full list of projects and initiatives, 
visit our finances section on the City of Kennings website. Thank you everyone. Uh, thanks very much everyone. Look, I know it sounds uh, like we're patting ourselves on the back and in some respects we have, but uh, the last uh, uh, probably two years have been an incredible uh, roller coaster for this, uh, for this council, for this city and also for Western <coughs> Australia and the greater Australian economy and we're not finished yet. So uh, I'm immensely proud with the performance of this city, particularly over the last uh, 18 months and I, I know that we're on track and I'm incredibly proud of where we are going as a local government municipality. I'm going to uh, just ask now for um, our CEO and director's address, and I'm going to hand over to Mr. Michael Littleton. Welcome, Michael, to your first AGM as uh, the city's uh, new CEO, so thank you, and um, over to you. Uh, thanks very much, Mayor Hall. Um, and uh, can I say it's an ab absolute privilege to, uh, to be here addressing you uh, tonight. Um, so um, uh, it's uh, certainly an honour to present the City of Canning's annual report for 2021, my first annual report as CEO of this great city. In the short time I have been at Canning, I have been so impressed by the commitment, passion and community focus of the team. They are well invested in making Canning a wel welcoming and thriving city. I would like to acknowledge and thank the executive. They're on my right, so uh, um, obviously uh, Sarah McQuaid is our Director of Community uh, and Customer. Uh, Graham Bride is our Director of Planning and Development. Warren Bowe is our Director of um, Infrastructure and Environment. And Keely Hayward is our Acting Director of Corporate and Commercial. So thank you very much for your efforts. Uh, Anne de is in the audience. She's our General Counsel and the Guru of Governance. Um, so can I say thank you to, uh, to the Executive, but can I also say thank you to their teams uh, for providing exceptional customer service for their hard work and for their dedication throughout the 21-22 financial year. And uh, that commitment continues uh, today. So keep up the great work. 21-22 was another busy year for the city. The team will run through their respective areas in a moment, and I don't want to steal their thunder, but I can say that there are many successes to celebrate and our future is bright. In 21-22, we adopted a budget of almost $158 million which included a budgeted operating deficit of $2.9 million, so we're in the red. The team worked hard throughout the year to make savings where possible and to in increase revenues where achievable. Uh, Ms Hayward will report a balanced year-end year position, uh, which also includes a transfer to meet our obligations at Rossmoyne Retirement Village, which is an exceptional turnaround for the team and a fantastic result for the city. Of course, we continue to see the challenges faced by the global economic climate with increased inflation, increased costs of service provision, recruitment challenges, and further disruption to supply chains, all impacting our business in the reporting year and are all still prevalent today. Please be assured that we will continue to do our best to mitigate these impacts and we will continue to focus uh, on uh, the, uh, providing and achieving uh, great outcomes uh, for the Canning community uh, in this financial year. Your local government administration and council continues to focus on adding value to you, the community, and providing value through the services and projects we deliver. We are aligned in our vision and in our goals and aspirations for our community, and that is extremely important. Uh, you are lucky that you have a council and a city that are at one and focused on delivering great outcomes for you. We acknowledge that there, are always room, there is always room for improvement and we are currently impl implementing a few minor changes to focus our business on servicing our community and achieving further success. We are on a journey and we look forward to engaging with you all and meeting our future aspirations. In closing, I would like to acknowledge and thank Mayor Patrick Hall and the elected member group for their hard work and dedication to community and for their support of the team and I. My final thanks go to the community. Thank you also for making this place a welcoming and thriving city. We welcome your continued engagement and collaboration on all things Canning. I commend the 21-22 annual report to you. The team will each come forward and make a brief presentation on their respective areas and we welcome your feedback. Mr. Mr. Bride. 
Thank you, Sir Yard. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor and the CEO. Um, I'm just going to run through a couple of uh, my business units, uh, starting off with statutory town planning. So the city determined 536 development applications and collected over $650,000 in fees. 88.6% of all development approvals lodged were determined within the statutory reporting period. And the overall value of developments approved was equivalent to $257.7 million, so quite a lot of uh, significant development within the city of Canning. We also approved 177 subdivision applications. In our strategic planning area, uh, we approved several local planning policies, including the design review panel, which looks after our built environment, and a tree retention policy. The Castle Dare structure plan and scheme amendment were also adopted. A local heritage survey and heritage list review was completed and adopted. And the city led a 15 local government consortium to advocate for mid-tier public transport across Perth. And the city was recently successful in that advocacy work. In terms of our urban regeneration area, uh, the city was successful, and obviously uh, through Mayor Hall's work, in advocating for upgraded train stations at Queen's Park and Cannington, along the Armadale Line, and a longer section of elevated rail the Wharf Street Basin in Cannington received several awards throughout the year from the Public Works uh, IPWIA, WA Apartment Advocacy and the Planning Institute of Australia. Uh, importantly, the city was uh, negotiated a land transfer to construct Cecil Avenue East and Lake Street Urban Stream uh, with the help of the Department of Communities and Development WA. And a project which, which was quite localised but the Layla Street upgrade project was completed. Moving on to regulatory services. So the city has a public health plan and year three recommendations and actions were implemented, including Your Move Canning, programs at the leisure plexures, event delivery, support for volunteering and youth development activities. We also adopted, uh, or council adopted seven new local laws, including the CAT, fencing, waste, animals and nuisance and environment and local government property and public places laws. So that was all done within the calendar year, bringing all our local laws up to, uh, up to standard. And finally, our COVID response, uh, we were responsible for continuing to work with the Department of Health to ensure that uh, the city of Canning's um, uh, community were protected throughout the COVID uh, response. I'll now pass on to Director Boat. Uh, thank you, Graham. It's been uh, my privilege to serve as the Director of uh, Canning Environment for nearly six years uh, with the City of Canning, uh, and I'm incredibly proud of the changes that we've uh, brought across and into the City in that time. I'll just run through a couple of the key achievements of 21-22 uh, financial year. Um, and my area looks after the, the major city services uh, and projects uh, across a wide range of infrastructure and uh, and, and areas that deliver great things for the community on a daily basis. Uh, parks and environment is in my remit. We uh, in, endorsed uh, with council support our significant tree register. We adopted a uh, dog, place, dog spaces strategy. Uh, we redeveloped nine playgrounds across the city. We opened the Hillview Park, which is just across uh, the road here as part of the Bentley Parkscapes program. We planted 5,000 new trees in accordance with our street tree strategy and over 20,000 trees within revegetation areas across the city. We successfully implemented a tree succession program uh, across the Shelley Rossmoyne foreshore in accordance with the management plan that council endorsed a number of years ago. And we had also some significant investment in general park infrastructure across the city and we upgraded, as uh, you would have seen in the uh, video at the start of the presentation, uh, the sports lighting as part of uh, the Barandar North, sorry, Barandar South and Barandar Central uh, sports lighting upgrade program as we continue to upgrade the large majority of our sport, sport lighting infrastructure across the city. Uh, we, we finally delivered this building, which was uh, a number of years in the making uh, with council support, the ultimate, uh, the initial purchase of this land and the facility 
that was on this land and the redevelopment of the Hillview Intercultural Centre, which we're incredibly proud of and which I'm sure you'll agree is a testament to this city. Um, we delivered, um, finally delivered the Willerton Sports Precinct. Um, we upgraded the Willerton Library and we completed the Burrendale Boulevard upgrade, which brought our investment in conjunction with the Willerton Basketball Association into the Willerton Sports Precinct into around the $16 million mark. We improved uh, our walking and cycling infrastructure and we resealed 7.2 kilometres of roads across the, across the city. Um, our, our clean canning program looks after our, our major uh, waste services and uh, cleaning services across all our infrastructure uh, within the city. I won't run into to the detail of those achievements, but uh, be rest, rest assured that the staff in our area work incredibly hard to present the facilities and infrastructure at a suitable standard to the community on a daily basis. We are achieving great progress in our asset management um, um, pursuits, um, evidenced also or supported also by a significant turnaround in the city's financial position, which the mayor and CEO alluded to. It will help us reinvest in our assets moving forward. Uh, and we're also uh, on our way to net zero by 2030 in accordance with um, the sustainability requirements and the feedback we received from the community about what we should be doing in this space. Uh, and part of that will be uh, the purchase of a significant number of electric vehicles in our fleet as we aim to decarbonise our entire fleet over time. I'll hand over to my colleague, Director McQuaid. Thank you. I'm a bit short. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> Thank you, Warren. Um, so I'm here to talk tonight about our customer and community program area. So community is all things community facing, all of our um, community facilities and services and events and activations. So I'm going to start very briefly um, with our business development area. Um, I'm not going to go through all of everything that's on the slide. You can read those yourselves. But just to touch on a few highlights, um, the business development team have continued to really advocate on behalf of our local business community um, and to deliver a range of programs and initiatives that support um, their growth and our economy. Uh, some key areas for us in that area has been through a number of research reports, which has already been touched on through the Mayor's video, um, and advocacy efforts on behalf of local industry within the City of Canning. We've continued to deliver the City's flagship business mentoring program, and we supported over 24 um, local community members to participate through that program, and we also saw the launch of the first ever female founders program. Um, our residential aged care facility, Canning Lodge, we continue to provide 24-7 support to all of our residents in that facility. Um, we have navigated through COVID and supported um, a number of our residents who have been affected by COVID through that period, which you know does put a lot of um, strain and effort uh, onto staff and into those sorts of facilities. And so it's a testament to the team and to the work we do and the care we provide in that space. Our community, um, sorry, I've jumped a slide there. No, nope, we're jumping through. Our libraries area. <laughs> Sorry about that. We're not uh, going back, Cheryl. No, we're not going back. That's fine. Our library services obviously continues to be at the heart um, of our city's um, community facilities. Um, we have high visitation numbers and we continue to deliver a range of programs and services to meet our very diverse community with over 16,000 participants in those programs in 21-22. Um, we did complete the refurbishment of Willerton Library, a much-loved community library, and it was really fantastic to see the level of engagement that um, went into the planning and the refurbishment of that space. Uh, and we also saw the launch of our welcome points, which are now one-stop shop points for all new residents to Canning to come and find out about all things Canning. With our community and culture area, um, we wanted to grow on our efforts um, through our COVID-19 recovery program. Um, so we were able to leverage some Lottery West funding um, and worked with Curtin University and Multicultural Futures to launch the Cultural Ambassadors Program, um, which continues to grow and is a way in which we're really working to reach out to our community on a daily basis. Um, we've delivered a number of other um, key significant programs, uh, but I think, you know, the, probably the big ones are around our volunteering. We onboarded 30 new volunteers across a range of areas, helping from working out in our community gardens um, through to digital literacy and bilingual story time to support our community. So it's been a great year in that space. Hillview, um, this fantastic facility that you're here in tonight, um, a great effort by all across the city, 
Um, I think it has been testament uh, to the vision that we had for the Hillview Intercultural Centre and it's proven to be a great success in bringing our community together, connecting, enabling the sharing of ideas, learning new skills and really um, a place to celebrate our cultural diversity and we look forward to ongoing engagement with our community in this space into the future. We launched our neighbourhood revitalisation project, um, Wanju Welcome Queen's Park, um, which saw a range of activations, but really about working with community and responding to community, um, looking to work with local schools, local community groups and residents to activate Queen's Park and to have Queen Park, Queen's Park residents engaged in building projects, greening projects and the like. Community safety, also already touched on, um, the community safety and ranger team were awarded um, the community ranger team of the year award, which is a state award, which really does acknowledge the great work that goes into running a 24 seven community safety service within the city. Um, we continue to patrol the streets um, and we continue to work with our community in that space. Sorry. Um, and I guess just touching on a couple of the, the key things, um, we've continued to deliver on um, the number of our um, initiatives under our community safety, safety strategy, including launching uh, a community engagement portal. Um, and as already mentioned, we delivered a homelessness forum, which was about bringing um, all of the service providers in Canning together to really talk about what we can do to support those um, at risk of homelessness or experiencing homelessness. Um, and we also launched in partnership with Black Swan Health, um, the free doctor service, which provides free medical services to those most in need in our community. So all in all, a great year on behalf of the community team. Thank you. And I'm gonna hand over to Keely Haywood. So just for the sake of the recording, uh, Ms. Haywood is the Acting Director of Corporate and Commercial. Thank, Thank you, Acting Director. Thank you and good evening everyone. Um, so from a financial perspective, during the, um, during the year, Council adopted the long-term financial plan for the 10 years to 2031. The long-term financial plan has as its, at its core a strong focus on restoring long-term financial sustainability. Um, in addition, the city supported 30 plus rate payers through our hardship policy uh, and again received an unqualified uh, opinion from the Office of Auditor General for the 21-22 uh, year. Um, at our leisure centres at Riverton and Cannington, um, access was provided to just under 1.3 million visitors. Uh, during the year, the geothermal power generation system was revitalised and some locker um, upgrades were, were completed and also fitness equipment upgraded. Uh, similarly, at Whaleback Golf Course, some um, 81,000 rounds of golf were played. Uh, work started on the aged irrigation system uh, and the lake restoration project was undertaken with the much valued assistance of the Whaleback Scouts. Um, in terms of uh, our people, our employees, um, the culmination of uh, at least three years' effort by employees all across the organisation, the city was awarded gold status by LGIS for work, health and safety management excellence. Um, also in what was the culmination of a number of years of work, um, the city concluded negotiations for a new enterprise agreement with the city's workforce, covering most employees. Um, and finally, very exciting, the city t uh, executive team initiated a significant body of work to build a welcoming and thriving organisation, which is right for a welcoming and thriving city. In terms of all things technological, a uh, number of automated processes were released and the city's website was upgraded to make it easier for customers to engage and transact with the city directly. The city also transitioned to Teams Telephony, which is more flexible for users, but also a much more cost-effective option than traditional landlines. Um, and finally, from a land and property perspective, uh, the land utilisation area oversaw an uh, increase of 10% in gross tenancy income from city-owned properties, uh, completed four land sales, generating income of $6.2 million, and negotiated a land use agreement for the Ranford Road Station with compensation of $6.7 million paid to the city. So that's the update from our program area, and I'll turn now to the annual financial statements for the 21-22 year. <coughs> The City's financial statements for the 21-22 year were audited by KPMG under the direction of the Office of Auditor General. The outcome of the, uh, the audit was, once again, an unqualified audit opinion from the OAG. The City's annual budget for the 21-22 year was adopted by Council with a deficit of $3.2 million. However, after a series of budget reviews undertaken throughout the financial year, the forecast was for a reduced deficit of $2.9 million. By the end of the financial year, the city had through, <coughs> excuse me, a combination of factors, 
receive higher than expected revenue to the tune of some $4.1 million and experience lower than budgeted costs to the tune of $4.7 million, meaning the city achieved a net operating surplus of $5.66 million. Um, some of these factors um, that, that drove this position include receipt of a larger than expected federal assistance grant, um, higher than expected revenue in leisure, leasing and waste, uh, lower operating expenditure in employee costs and a delayed completion of some projects resulting in reduced expenditure in materials and contracts. Uh, some of these funds have been carried forward to the current financial year. So consistent with the adoption of the principles in reframing the long-term financial plan, which was adopted by Council on the 10th of May 2021, outstanding liabilities of $6 million were identified through savings during the year and liabilities retired. Since 2015, local government financial health has been measured using a combination of seven factors known as the financial health indicator. For the 21-22 year, the only indicator the city did not meet is the asset sustainability ratio. Despite this and through good financial management, the city expects an overall score of 75 for the 21-22 financial year. The benchmark score set by the Department of Local Government to indicate a financially healthy local government is 70, so we expect to exceed that by five points. This result, coupled with the audit results, indicates strong and robust financial management practices. Thank you. Thank you. We always present the financials last to put you all to sleep. Not yet. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Directors, for uh, your address. I very much appreciate it. I just draw um, Governance's uh, attention, Ms Cornish. I just draw Governance's attention to item two on tonight's agenda, uh, which is attendances. I think I might have made the comment on the public record that the full council is here. Um, I would just note for the record that Councillor Craig Sweeney is not here this evening. Uh, neither I nor the CEO have received an apology. Uh, he is not present. Uh, we now move on to uh, item five on tonight's meeting, which <coughs> is the receiving of the annual report for the year ended the 30th of June in 2022. Now, I'll require a mover and a seconder as required for this motion and simply to receive the annual report for the year ended the 30th of June, which includes the financial and audit reports. Can I have a mover from the floor, please? Thank you, Sean. You'll be the mover uh, and a seconder from the floor. Thank you. I'll just get you to state your name. Governance, did you? Colette Bishop. Colette Bishop, wasn't it? Thank you. Colette Bishop, thank you. Uh, Sean, as the mover, you have the right to speak if you wish for up to five minutes or, or not. And if not, we'll just put the matter to the vote. It's only to receive the annual, um, the annual report. Thank you, Sean. Sean's indicating she doesn't wish to speak on the matter. Um, I'll then ask uh, for the matter to be put to the vote. All in favour of receiving the annual report for the year ended 30th of June 2022, please raise your hand. I'll just get you to keep your hands up. Governors will just run uh, round and do a quick count. Please don't change your hand, that'll really confuse our counting system. Have we got the number? Got the number? Thank you very much, Governance. Thank you, Governance. Thank you. Uh, and are those against receiving the annual report? Uh, none, none against? Thank you, uh, the matter has been passed, the annual report has been received, uh, thank you. <coughs> we move on to general business at item six. And at item 6.1, questions submitted in advance. And we have had a number of questions, those from uh, Mr. Musa and also from Ms. Bishop. I'm expecting a uh, Colette here. Uh, Mr. Musa, are you here this evening? I've got M-U-S-A. It was in relation to uh, Lima Way in Willerton? No. no? Somebody else? Did you submit uh, questions for the meeting? Yeah. You did? He's got a motion. Oh, you've got a motion coming up. Yeah, that's okay. That's all right. I have a uh, question here. I'll read them to the, uh, to the meeting. We have a prepared uh, statement. We have a question here from Mr. K. Musa of Lima Way in Willerton. His question, and I will read it to the meeting. His question is, why are the trees along Rostrada Avenue not maintained? There are a lot of dying and dead trees which need to be replaced. 
it would seem the trees planted are not suited to the environment uh, that they've been uh, planted in. I have a response here from Director Warren Bow, the Director of Infrastructure and Environment. Director Bow, did you want to read your response or are you happy for me to read it? Uh, the, uh, the written response is, uh, for, uh, sorry, the second question is, when will the Canning Council start planting more trees in this precinct? And the precinct mentioned is Rostrada Avenue in Willerton. The response from Director Bo uh, to both of those questions is, despite popular belief, trees are not best left to grow on their own with minimal, uh, sorry, trees are best left to grow on their own with minimal intervention. Regular pruning is not considered good arb arbicultural practice as each time a tree is cut, we alter the philosophic physiology of the tree. Gee, I wish I'd asked you to read this. <laughs> and the open wound provides opportunity for pests and diseases to enter the tree. The city undertakes annual compliance pruning on its street trees uh, to maintain clearances from power lines and allow for passing vehicle and pedestrians. The trees on Rostrada Avenue are pruned when branches and foliage comprise the required clearances from property and infrastructure. The city has recently completed audits of its trees and park tree assets throughout Williton and will be actioning any identified pruning works in the coming months. The city's philosophy is to plant the right tree for the right location. Currently, the city is managing the legacy of trees which have been planted into environments such as tree pits in road mediums which are not suitable to their growing requirements. A suburb planting prioritisation plan has been developed which proposes to focus planting new park and street trees in the city suburbs which have the lowest levels of tree canopy cover and the highest land surface temperatures based on data in the urban forest strategy. The city is planning to undertake suburb planting in Williton in 2026 and 27, subject to resourcing, which will include reviewing trees planted in road mediums. And whilst that uh, response was only in relation to the question, which was centric to Williton, um, I know that the council and the city, uh, or council is investing a great deal of money in improving our tree canopy right across the city. Uh, and I think the evidence of that is when you drive around to see uh, new plantings at certain times of the year. Uh, Ms Bishop, I'll ask you to come forward. Would you like to read your own question? I'll just ask you to introduce yourself, uh, provide your address and then you're off and running. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Uh, my name's Colette Bishop, 86 Rimu Street in East Cannington. Um, good evening, Mayor, Councillors and Council. Um, I've got a couple of questions that have come up during the last year in my suburb, East Kennington. So one of the, my first question is, who is responsible for verge parking outside large and small unit complexes? Can the city control this? I have been told that the strata management, uh, I have been told it is up to strata management as to whether to allow this outside of their properties I'll just I'll get uh, the director to answer that question yep. if you like. Um, director McQuaid. Thank you. Um, the city's ranger and community safety service can deal with parking issues on the verge and on the road. In cases of verges that are joined unit complexes, excluding those for which parking signs are already in place, the city will require confirmation from the strata as to which vehicles are authorised to park on the verge. Um, any issues of this nature can be referred directly to our Ranger and Community Safety Service. So the, from the director, they can be directed directly to us? Okay, because um, with a few conversations last year with your Ranger Services, it's been very difficult because to try and get an answer because unless those, uh, because most of the unit complexes don't actually have enough room or parking for the people that are residing in Understood. those complexes. Well, so you, you basically yeah. just have the whole verge outside these complexes uh, used as a parking lot. Now they could park on the road, but people there choose not to park on the road. Yeah. So Perhaps after the meeting yeah. there might be an opportunity to speak to Director McQuaid in relation to that yep. uh, matter yeah. if you would like. And yeah, I'm sort of, I'm sort of wanting council to maybe revisit as to what they can do about that. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Right. Just your second question. Uh, my second question is, 
in regards to abandoned shopping trolleys. Abandoned shopping trolleys, could the council engage with Westfield Shopping Centre and its partners to stop them littering the city centre and surrounding high density suburbs? These abandoned trolleys can be seen in ever increasing numbers littered throughout the city centre and surrounding suburbs, especially again outside high density complexes. I take your point, uh, we're seeing a proliferation. No, wherever there is a shopping centre, uh, we see abandoned trolleys, and it's not just the city of Canning, but yeah, we but can I'm certainly just saying work with in Westfield general, Carousel. Yeah, it's in ever increasing because of the high density, and could we maybe engage? We need to keep talking to them. You're right, yeah. uh, Director McRae. I'll get you just to respond directly. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Yes, we can, and we will engage with Westfield because there are very Absolutely. little signage on the trolleys in the car parks anywhere. No overseas visitors really don't know we'll what they're supposed to, to do. Okay, yeah, thank you. No problem at all. Uh, and your the next question. Your and the question. next question: Could the city revisit how hard waste is managed? Um, and this has been a recent occurrence in Renault Street in East Kennington, in Ca East Kennington Mason Ward, where I had to endure over three weeks of uncollected hard waste on our verges during January 2023 of this year. It was being blown across roads and neighbours' front yards. As Renault Street is a main bus route, it became a very dangerous situation for buses to navigate. I have recently had to make numerous, uh, recently had to make numerous reports on properties continuing to place rubbish on verges well after the three weeks post-collection date. Surely there is a better way. May I also add, it is an arduous process to report through the city's website I've had to resort to going into council offices. So that's I apologise for that. Um, yeah. Director Bow, would you like to yeah, thank respond? You, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Yeah, the city can uh, review its, its hard waste collection services, uh, but you may appreciate that uh, with the current labour market, uh, there is a shortage of qualified drivers, truck drivers. Yeah. Uh, there's certainly uh, other opportunities outside the city of Canning for those with those licences. Uh, I wasn't aware that we were three weeks behind, Ms Bishop, but I will follow that up with the staff and we will attempt to... Uh, we are actually already looking Three weeks all. meaning <laughs> they started throwing stuff out before Christmas. They started throwing things out on the 1st of January. <laughs> then it was a week delay in collection, a week or two, to nearly 10 days delay in collection right. of the yeah. rubbish and it was just a nightmare. And if you drive through our suburb, it's still there. And more is being put out after collection days, right. and it's Thank can you. we have something else yeah. maybe, yeah, or just discuss what else we can yeah. do? Yeah, absolutely. I was driving through there uh, only a week and week or so ago. Our, our contractors were there uh, in relation to uh, people putting out their hard waste prior to yeah. uh, the recommended dates. That's something that I can take up with uh, my colleague Director McQuaid in relation to the ranges as well. Yeah, thank and you, post Bush. recommended dates too. We're, we're right. seeing okay. So okay, thank you. Um, I've Please may I ask, I've got a one fourth question. Uh, I'll allow uh, one further question. Yep, yep, and it's not a long one, it's, it's similar to the others. So this is something that's come about fairly recently because of the current climate in our area and worldwide, Australia-wide, is has the city got appropriate laws to deal with overcrowding at rental properties surrounding Curtin University and suburbs surrounding the city centre? has been an issue. Uh, Director Bride, I'll get you to respond directly to Ms Bishop's question. Yeah, thank question. you, Ms, Thank Ms. you, Ms Bishop. Uh, yeah, the city does have a specific policy relating to student accommodation and, that, uh, and associated occupancy levels, and that applies to the suburbs around Bentley, Wilson and St James. Uh, more broadly, there is a planning and health controls around the number of persons that can occupy a dwelling, and where breaches are observed, the city can take action under legislation. Okay. So, if is even in private rentals, not student accommodation. If you have somebody who's got a private rental right. with four, apparently the going rate per room is about $400 a room from what, I, from what I've heard. So this is going to be an emerging issue, I think, in the next year or so because we're getting overseas visitors arriving without any knowledge of how That's tight the rental orders. market is. Thank really you for coming is. along this evening. Appreciate okay. it. Thank All you. right. Thank you. Thank you, Ms Bishop. Uh, I'm just thank you very much for those uh, questions that were provided to us uh, prior to the meeting. 
Um, at item 6.2, questions from the floor. Uh, if there's anybody would like to ask a quick question while you're here, um, please feel free to do so. I'd simply ask that you uh, walk up to the microphone, uh, introduce yourself uh, and ask your meeting. We'll do our best to answer it. And if we can't, we'll ta take the uh, question on notice and we'll provide a written um, response to it at, at some point. Anyone have a question? Gentleman in the front. I'll just ask you to introduce yourself to the meeting, please. Just state your name and also <coughs> your address. My name is Gurjal Singh Upal, 210 Watt Street, Queen's Park. Thank you. And uh, we are the uh, first thing ha thankful to the council. They have made few facilities at the Queen's Park Oval where we, mm -hmm. they fixed the benches and the table for eating and there's a shade. Still, there's a path also they made and la light, all these things they have done. But I requested in the last request that there is a no table in the area where there is a barbecue. Only one barbecue in the park and that is without the table. We can't sit there after cooking the barbecue, no seat for table and uh, putting the food. So that is, again, I'm requesting that it should be done as soon as possible. And uh, another thing is about the play area. Sand was supposed to be changed few years back, last year, but it has not been changed for the playground area where children play. And the tape around that area is faulty every 10 minutes. Uh, no, every 10 days, we have to complain again and again that drinking water tape that always goes wrong. And there is another big problem. We bring our kids there and the toilet is 200, 300 meter away from the play area. So we requested that if they can put a simple toilet near the play area so that children can go easily, we need not to take children far away. And even we seniors, we feel very hard to control when it is time for natural call, it is 300 meters from the place where we look after kids. You're talking about a toilet? Yeah, toilets, yeah. You're looking at probably a minimum of about, what, about a half a million dollars at the moment to put in a toilet, aren't we, somewhere around there? It's a big ask. What I'll do is I'll ask the uh, governance team to take, I, I noticed that uh, you came in late to the meeting and we may not have your name and address, so I well, know you gave it at the top of uh, your questions, but I might just get governance to actually write uh, down uh, your name and address and take that from you when you return to your seat. Right. Uh, and I know that our executives are scribbling down notes uh, of the questions that you've asked. Right. And just to uh, everybody here this evening too, don't forget the role of these councillors here is to work on your behalf and represent you. So if you do have an issue, don't feel you need to save it up to come to this AGM every year. If you've got an issue, we've got uh, people wishing to put a motion about a couple of trees uh, in a street. Uh, these are things that can be dealt with every day by simply ringing your councillors. Their mobile phone numbers and their emails are on the website. You can uh, arrange meetings with them, having a, have a chat. They can bring motions to council. They can address those matters on your behalf. So you just need to speak to them or me. I'm happy to receive calls and emails. So absolutely. And the uh, last thing I would like to request, in spite of putting few more benches over there in the children area, still we have shortage of benches. People sit on the ground, sit on the ball, and uh, it is requested if you can put uh, three or four more bench around that area so that everybody can look after their kids when they are playing. We're taking a note of that. I'd encourage you to speak to your local ward representatives as well, but we will be coming to uh, those things um, obviously need to be budgeted. The City of Canning will Council will start its uh, budget deliberations in about March. So uh, the timing is fine, but uh, we, there's a whole process wrapped around spending thousands of dollars on, uh, on things like that. Uh, and the toilets yourself, um, I, can't, I can't promise you anything. Yeah. And the reason I say that is because we're very reluctant at the moment, unless there's an incredible need for it, to be uh, introducing and establishing uh, toilet blocks because there are inherent problems with them other than people just going to the toilet. Uh, they cost an extraordinary amount of money and then of course we need to maintain them. So it's a big cost to ratepayers. And when we're all working hard to keep our rates as low as we can, uh, you know, walking 200 metres to a toilet is probably not such a, a big deal uh, considering how much it would cost. 
to provide a toilet for the few people that might use it. So I'm so just being frank. You can send your refrigerator to any time on the evening. There are 200 people around that area. Okay. Yeah. And right. uh, kids, they play in this area. We can't leave the kids and go 300 meter away for passing okay. the urine and nature of call. Your concerns so are noted. Thank you very yeah, much for yeah. coming along this evening. I appreciate it. I'll yeah. catch and that. third thing, because I've been staying in this area for 35 years, I have not seen any bigger development in that area for the sitting or for the pergola or other thing like uh, uh, benches or table for the barbecue. You must be pleased though, you're obviously talking about Queen's Park. Yeah. You must be pleased though with the level of investment that's actually occurring in that whole suburb over just the last two years. Yeah. So I don't uh, dismiss what you're saying. In fact, uh, you know, people like my, uh, the councillors here are from every suburb. I was raised in Shelley uh, and a uh, very different suburb. Uh, but yeah, um, uh, we have, at, in some respects, I believe, just to be frank, dropped the ball a little bit in relation to the level of investment in some of those suburbs. And I'd like to think that people here now know uh, that we are now picking up the ball and we are investing heavily through this whole southeast corridor here because we need to. And there are some big projects, not all of them ours. No, uh, I agree with you. I understand everything. Yeah. But small things like a table. Okay. In the barbecue, it's not costing million dollar or it. Got it. It is. It been neglected from the beginning. Thank you. When Look, the barbecue we'll was. We'll need, we'll need to move on. I can't yeah, have a yeah, conversation yeah, with you yeah. tonight about it. It's public question time. I only need a question. So, so you've asked a number of questions, perhaps perhaps a wish list. But either either way, we have made notes and uh, we will take uh, all of those things that you said seriously. And your two ward councillors here, uh, Hardeep Singh uh, and also Jesse Jacobs, are here and I'm certain both of those gentlemen have also taken note, please contact them. My absolute pleasure. Uh, anybody else? I'll go, I'll go left or right, I'll take the gentleman in the front, uh, then I'll take the gentleman behind you, and then I'll move to the right, thank you. Just introduce yourself yeah, to me. Yeah, hello everyone, thanks for giving me an opportunity. And I'll, I'll just ask too, just to clarify, it's uh, public question time, so I can't have speeches and uh, long preambles. Please just get to the no, no, uh, question. I will be just in the short, you know, I won't take your precious time. Thank you. Uh, myself, Bikram Rajput. I'm the resident of number in Queen's Park, 68 Cross Street in Queen's Thank Park. Thank you. Uh, I'm living in this area from the last 11 years. Um, it's a pretty good area, you know. I uh, never had issues before, but recently I found there are a lot of bulgaries happening now. Recently, uh, you know, on the verges, the, the, the last night one of my car got be smashed. You know, the, the people, they're taking stuff out of there, you know. So these things, there are no lights there. So um, I would ask, you know, the maybe I can approach my counselor and I can ask him, you know, uh, who is the responsible to take care of our, like, proper, like the personal belongings, you know, because uh, I keep they putting the request, complaints to the police department, but there's no, not much like patrolling happening there. I, I, can, I can give you a direct answer. Look, uh, for those that don't know, I was a police officer for 25 years, so I've got a fair idea. The range of services that we run here and we invest heavily in Neighbourhood Watch and we fund that. Uh, our ranger services, we've got 24-7 ranger patrol, but those people, our rangers, uh, are not, don't have any power statutorily to ask questions, uh, demand names and address, make arrests, they just can't. Yes. So they really are uh, like citizens. Uh, they are driving around and reporting uh, things that they see and gathering evidence. The short and sharp answer is, it's a responsibility of the state government, it's a police issue. Uh, that we have a police minister, uh, we have a criminal code, uh, and we have a police act. Uh, and they are uh, statutory, um, uh, they are legislation that empowers police officers to do all the things that you would want them to do. And I don't think there's anybody in this room that hasn't been touched uh, by crime in some regard over the last few years. Uh, and I'm just as frustrated and concerned as you are. Uh, and uh, so, um, the short answer is we need to be talking uh, to our local politicians. Uh, we've, we're very lucky to have two very hard-working uh, um, public servants here in Bill Johnson, who's a minister in the Crown, and also Dr Jags over in uh, Williton, and they are hard-working, genuine people, and you can speak to them, but it is a state government uh, issue in relation to crime per se, but we are also doing our bit, and I'm really pleased to say that despite the uh, problems we had uh, establishing it, um, in the last 18 months, the City of Canning finally uh, has been able to establish a CCTV uh, policy which allows us now to provide infrastructure in areas in which it's most needed. So we do have some mobile units, but the reality is we can't be everywhere and uh, 
Yeah, even my own car was broken into two weeks ago, so I share your pain. Yeah, yeah. the problem is because even even we have the, the our neighbors have the CCTV cameras there, you know. So, but the people still don't scare to do, you know. They take the stuff there, so that's the problem, you know. Well, what's the fun to have the I CCTV? Can, I can only then, you know? I can only encourage people to report crime, and also if you see something, say something. If you see somebody that looks suspicious or you see activity uh, that concerns you, pick up the phone and ring. You can ring the police in the first instance, but. I know that, um, I don't speak for the director, but I know that we target our range of patrols to areas. We know our area. We know where they're most needed, but we just don't have the personnel on the street uh, to do the, the work of the police. We yep. just don't, and they don't have the same power. So it's a state government matter. I keep talking to local police. Roger Beer is the local police superintendent. I've known him for many years, but uh, trying to get more police on the road is just a, uh, an issue, not only for the city of Canning, uh, but further along the line, Gosnells, uh, Armadale, uh, yeah. you know, it's not just us. Yeah. But I appreciate uh, it. Noted. That's all right. Uh, my second question is regarding the playground in the Queen's Park Reserve. I think this gentleman, he already mentioned a lot of things yeah. there. But as a sportsman, uh, I already requested the city of Canning. I put in a complaint. I mentioned a lo lot of things to get fixed, you know, and I'm very thankful to them that they just put in the efforts. They send the team, you know. They fix a lot of things there, but still, the playground, the cricket nets there needs to be get fixed ASAP because it's a big hazard there. The cricket net? Yeah, the cricket net. We have two cricket nets there. And when we just went, obviously, the run-up like, you know, so there's a, like a big dump on the, on the both sides. Okay. The carpets needs to be cleaned and, and plus the, the big trees there. That's also a hazard. They just chopped a few, you know, big trunks there before, but it's, again, you know, it's getting bigger and bigger. I've got the directors taking notes, and it's a public meeting, so it's all recorded. Sorry. We'll get to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, and plus all other facilities, like, you know, for the kids, the safety of the kids. I'm not asking, like, to... No, no, I know. Yeah, that's no. he already mentioned. I'm not taking... No, it's no, fine. And the last, my last question is, when the, um, this, the CCTV cameras, like, obviously, on the streets, LED lights and the CCTV, how long it's going to take to, you know, the, um, the get installed or what, how long we are the LED lights and um, the CCTV cameras. Oh, I might be able to get the uh, I might be able to get the CEO just to talk about the LED light program. Yeah, because uh, I, I very I just read, I, I think our councillor he mentioned like in the one of the his um, the uh, the post in the city of Canning page, community page that's LED lights are going to be installed very soon. Well, we're working towards that. CEO, can you give us a very short? Uh, Mr. Dir Mike. Director Bo, can you give us a very short uh, Absolutely, uh, update Mayor. on the uh, uh, project to change those yeah, lights over? Council made a decision in uh, in December last year uh, to in invest in or to investigate other options about delivering uh, LED across the city in conjunction with the state government and their undergrounding of power across the city as well, including in Queens Park and Cannington. Uh, current project in Bentley. Uh, presentation will be made to uh, the elected members in March this year, which will present a number of options. Uh, those options won't include the installation of CCTV, though. Thank you. Right. Thanks for, Thanks for coming along. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, hi, my name is Trevor Whitford. I'm from uh, Unit 220A John Street in Bentley. Um, yeah, my, one of my few questions was actually around safety as well. So um, I'm not sure if you guys have heard of CoSafe, um, this program that Coburn have. It might be worth um, like aligning with those guys or talking to those guys about um, how the range of operations work and stuff because they've got um, really good feedback about their program and reducing antisocial behaviour over there. So, um, But anyway, my first question um, is um, just around Bentley 360. So um, the city canning has done a lot of work to rejuvenate the parks around Bentley and St James. Um, I've been looking for some information online about um, progress with that, and I can't find anything. I'm just wondering if the city has any um, information on any uh, sort of progress. Well, don't get me started. Bentley 360, yeah. So <laughs> I'll get Director Bride to address it, but just so you know, that wasn't just us uh, doing those parks. Uh, the state government uh, co-funded a lot of that work was part of the project, and unfortunately, we've done all the beaut beautified, all the periphery of Bentley 360, but Bentley 360 itself uh, needs a state government to really push the hammer on that. And I know uh, Hannah Beasley, the local member for Victoria Park, is also uh, uh, as frustrated as we are and working hard to get something done there because it's been way too long and it's just got to get sorted. Uh, Director Bright. Yeah, I mean, that it, it is frustrating, but certainly the Department of Communities uh, has relinquished ownership. It's now with the Development WA and their objective is to actually 
you know, facilitate subdivision and make, make things happen. So at an officer level, we, are, we do know that uh, approximately six months' time, they should have finished their business case and we should have a updated structure plan uh, and thereafter, hopefully, some subdivision. So hopefully within the next 12 months, but as you know, it is a state government project. The City of Canning will support uh, the state government to ensure we get the right development as quickly as possible. So we've got our staff ready to go whenever, they're, whenever they finish their business case and, and, and obviously make it happen. So hopefully there'll be some movement on that front within the, the next 12 months. We don't have any control over the project, but we're ready and willing to engage with the state government whenever they're ready to go. We're ready to go as well. Yep. Okay, cool. Um, and the other question is just around um, waste man management uh, and litter. So um, I live near the Bentley Plaza there, and the street fills up with um, rubbish. So I put my gloves on and I'll get out and drag the bin down and pick it up. But you pick up a green bin full of waste uh, one week, and then the next week it's all back, and it's all coming out of the shopping centre. So uh, I'm just wondering um, if the council has a like a strategy or a um, policy for dealing with uh, rubbish that comes out of dumpsters and... Director, can we control stuff? the rubbish that's blowing up the street from the shopping centre at Bentley Plaza there on Albany Highway? No, I don't, I don't believe we can, Mr Mayor, but we do have um, uh, arrangements and, sorry, the, the, um, the shopping centre itself would have arrangements with, the, with their own waste contractors. Um, if, if people are uh, flagrantly littering, then that's a, that's a different matter. Uh, but obviously also our, our street cleaning services, our street sweeper aim to uh, address some of the, you know, sort of some of the wind blown litter as well from commercial premises. So that can be reported through our, our requested portal. Um, but as far as littering goes, it's a, it's a, it's a fairly difficult um, issue to, to prove from a commercial business when you know, bins are overflowing and, and how, they, how you actually trace and um, uh, assign the waste that's uh, blown down the, the, the road from a particular business. Yeah, cool. I only mention that because it just end up, ends up in the uh, waterways. But um, uh, and Keep picking it up, Trevor. You're doing a lot of good. Thank you. <laughs> yep. uh, the last question um, is just around the mental health unit. I think I heard last question, the last question. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, sorry. Uh, just the mental health unit on All Day Street. Um, does the city have any data um, on any social behaviour or anything um, since that's open? I think it's been about six months now. So. Um, no, I don't think we... The data would be police data, so we, we don't control that. The police publish certain crime figures on their website, but, uh, yeah, we, we don't uh, generally, as a, as a rule, we don't have it and we don't publish it. Sorry. Thanks for coming along. Uh, yes, step forward. That's you. Hi, uh, Max Zeller, um, 12 foreshore entrance. Hi, Max. Um, yeah, promise one question? Okay. Um, just in relation to the hard waste, I appreciate you doing the review. Um, I just wanted to ask whether the, because this um, issue's come up a number of times at the Ratepayers Association, which I work, um, work with, um, whether the city will be considering um, skip bins um, and um, tip passes. I mean, we used to have tip passes in the city canning and adjoining councils like City of Coburn have it. And I, I think that'll go a long way to resolving a lot of the issues you know, around hard waste. So. Thanks, Max. I'll just get a direct answer from Director Bow. Thank um, you. Um, both, Bo. both, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Both those options uh, will be considered as we as we look to deal better with our hard waste. In in the context, though, of our our contracts uh, for waste disposal that are both current and our future contracts with the Waste to Energy Fund. We'll be speaking about it as a council, but uh, options for uh, road verge pickups and uh, and bins, we are going to be talking about it at some stage this year. So it's on the agenda. Council's already. We're talking about it as well. Um, yeah, watch your space, Max. Uh, anyone else have a question before we move on? Thanks, everybody. I'm going to close uh, public question time then at 7.03. Do you see how quickly I did that? Thank you. Uh, we've got a number of motions uh, submitted in advance tonight, one from the gentleman over here. Um, at, we're at item 6.3 on tonight's uh, uh, agenda. We need a mover and a seconder as required for any motion before it can be spoken to or put to the vote. Motions have been received in advance from Mr. Carmelo Musca and Ms. Uh, Nadina uh, Rapik. I'm sorry, I probably haven't pronounced that correctly. Uh, Mr. Musca, I'm going to ask you to please come forward to the public microphone and I'll get you to state the motion you wish to uh, put. Now, I understand, uh, uh, I'll just get you, I've got your name here, Carmelo Musca, and I'll just get your address off you, please, if you don't mind. Sure. That's I'm Camelo Musker from 44 Tribute Street West in Shelley. Thank uh, you. And you've got a motion you'd like to put tonight. What would, what would that motion be? Do, have you got it there? Do you, do you want to read it out? Well, it's in front of me. I'd, I'd like to 
request that the council plant street verges. Now, I learnt tonight that you plant 5,000 trees, and I'd like to commend the council on that, which I didn't. But we've lived at 44 Tribute Street since the mid-70s, my wife and I. and Newcomers. Yeah, newcomers. And apart from one tree and one that we paid for last week and, and got council permission yep. to plant, we haven't seen any being planted in that block. We, w we went for a walk and there's more than 30 houses being built. Directly behind us, three blocks, huge trees were demolished, and I mean huge trees. We counted one year 50 uh, uh, cockatoos in, in these trees, magpies. That's fine. I understand progress. I'll just, uh, just stop you there. So what yep. we'll get you to do, yep. if we have a seconder for your matter, I've got Max Zeller's thrown his hand up, preempted my move. Uh, so we do have a seconder, and then once we have a seconder, and that would be uh, Mr. Max Zeller, uh, then I'll ask you to speak on the matter. So just speak directly to us. You've already okay. you've already started. So the, uh, Thank we have you. had a, a mover, and we have had a seconder. Okay. Uh, and um, I will then ask you to speak on the matter. And after you've spoken on the matter, if you've convinced all and sundry that they should support you, I'll call for a show of hands, and we'll see if we can uh, get that through. But before you do, I wanted to ask a question of Director Bow, Director Bow, just in relation to the request tonight, uh, we obviously have a plan for the planting of trees. Um, just a off, uh, question without notice. Do you know whether that area in Shelley, Minota, or in Tribute, there's been a, a massive amount of roadworks uh, through Tribute uh, recently. Is that going to be planted in the next year? Um, Mr. Mayor, not, I can't specifically say in, in Shelley because the reality is there are, the city has one of the lowest uh, urban canopy coverages across the metropolitan area and our urban forest strategy aims to improve that from about 9% to about 12%. Uh, there are a number of uh, suburbs across the city of Canning who have a significant deficit of urban canopy cover when compared to Shelley. But Shelley is programmed for, um, I guess, around 2026-2027 from uh, the street tree investment perspective and the prioritisation based on some of the other canopy coverages across the city. Um, but in relation to a couple of the properties that you mentioned, um, where uh, development was undertaken, including the demolition or, or um, reconstruction of, of residential dwellings, there are planning conditions that are imposed uh, on um, private developers that require certain trees uh, and certain uh, root protection zones to be preserved and also some deep root uh, soil zones as well as part of the planning uh, of those. So any also in any street tree that's removed as part of that development is required to be, uh, be replanted. And in fact, it's a two to one ratio under our street tree uh, strategy. So that's... Uh, Thanks, Director. No, it's fabulous. Thanks for that. So, so it is coming, but uh, as sure. you would appreciate, uh, areas uh, there are other areas that uh, need trees sure. faster. Uh, uh, and um, but Shelley is happening in the next couple of years. You've got your two uh, ward councillors here for Bannister, okay. Mansa, Manda Spencer Tio, and the Deputy Mayor Ben Kunza. And I know that their ears would have pricked up, so I'm sure that they <laughs> will be taking <laughs> note. Uh, but please uh, just spend a couple of moments, if you'd like, just sure. to speak on the matter, sure. and then we'll put it to the vote. So directly behind our house. Three blocks, three houses have been demolished. Behind us to the right, four houses have already been built and they're in completion. There won't be any room for any trees on that block of land because they're all a metre from the fence and there's a driveway. Directly behind us, the house has been demolished. There's three blocks, same situation. Directly behind us to the left, three blocks. All the trees were removed and they were big trees. Next to us, our neighbours have told us that they're going to remove four big trees and they're going to build three houses. Now, all I'm asking, uh, the motion that I'm putting, is that I think the council should act really quickly and plant trees on the verges to make up for some of these trees. I'm not against the development, but I found out when we had our tree that we paid for planted and the council person, Tom, I don't know his surname, lovely young man, helped us plant the tree, said that trees are only planted if they're requested by the people that live in the homes. M my neighbours and people up the street didn't know that. They don't know that they have to request a tree. They also um, don't know that today is the deadline for this year. So if you haven't requested the tree by today, you can't request a tree for the whole year. Now, I 
I would like the council, the motion really is that when you're doing these developments, come on guys, as soon as the houses are started to be built, you know where the driveways are, come in and plant some trees or encourage the owners of the houses to plant some trees. Um, so that, that's my motion really is that, uh, in particularly in that area, Minota Avenue between Tribute Street and Home Street, you could plant, you could plant eight trees. And I'm, you know, without any problem at all. And that's just on one side of the road. The roundabout outside the Tribute Street Cafe, why don't we have a nice big tree in the middle of that roundabout? Uh, or, you know, some vegetation. Beatrice is, is lovely, with all the trees down the middle, is looking really nice and coming on really well. So I agree with you, as someone who said that area has been neglected a little bit, and that's why I came tonight to bring it to your attention. Also, I think on Medillion, they're building a new house and the street tree has died, just completely died. I don't know the number, but I think it's um, between... Anyway, there's, if, if the council drive along, the street tree's dead. You know, nice big box tree. Oh, I think as Director uh, Bozzi said, we've done a street tree audit yeah, in the yeah. last 12 months, so they would have picked that up. Sure. But of course, we don't plant tra trees at this time of the year because uh, sure, the attrition rate mid is so middle high. Of summer, so yeah. Unfortunately, we only generally ask people to, uh, to order a plant at particular times yeah. of the year one opportunity because we only plant during planting season generally. So uh, that's why. I appreciate that as well. But it had to be requested by yeah, today, et cetera. Yeah. So, okay. so that, that's why I came along tonight and suggesting a motion was the only option I kind of had on the thing. So thank you very All much good. For, thank your, you. for, for your time. Okay, be kind, everybody. And uh, as uh, as I said earlier, uh, Mr. Musk has uh, spoken in uh, favour of his motion. Max Eller, thank you. Max has uh, seconded the motion. Uh, I'm now going to uh, call for those in favour. Show of hands. And I'll just get to governance to race around and uh, quickly count. Got a number? Fine. I think the matter's been carried. Thank you very much, Mr. Rusker. As you as you heard earlier in this evening, uh, the motion tonight doesn't bind council to do what you said, but obviously you've got the CEO, all the directors, the mayor, and the whole council sitting listening to you. So uh, noted. We do have a tree program. We will get to it. Uh, you made a very valid point tonight. So thank you for coming along. Um, I just wanted to say we have. Um, uh, Mrs. Haritha here tonight from Pollock Street in Bentley wanted to ask a question. I won't call you forward at the moment, but I will get you to come forward in a few moments. I'm just going to finish this business off, if you don't mind. We have a second motion from uh, uh, Miss N Nadina Rapik. Thank you very much. Hello, how are you? Come along. Uh, you're from Arthur Street in Cannington, I believe. Is that right? Correct. Okay. Uh, would you like to uh, read uh, your motion to the uh, to the audience, and then I'll ask for somebody to second it and if we have a seconder we'll keep going thank you sure. so my motion is to install a fixed surveillance device and signage in the vicinity of the cul-de-sac in arthur street cannington for the purposes of detecting antisocial behavior and improving the safety of nearby residents thank you i'm sorry that you're experiencing that there it's obviously a problem if you've come along to the council um do we have a seconder in the room this gentleman here can i get you just to state your name Emilio Rentazzo, thank you very much for that. Uh, and um, I will ask you, uh, Nadina, just to speak for a few moments on that. Why do you think that that should happen? Sure, so I'll try and keep it short and sweet. I appreciate that crime okay. is everywhere. So long story short, we have a, it's not a proper path. It's like just a thoroughfare path behind us. Then we have empty block of land right here it's hard to explain um and there's shops and car parks and saint john of god um medical center what happens is there's a lot of crime and people are using that not proper path to run away run through shops and we've experienced it there's a lot of people that use it also like drunk and disorderly all times of night they we've been woken up in the middle of the night people disposing of goods and running across that area, um, 
they've now other people have now they gated off that path and they've vandalized it and broken it this will be the third time after reinforcement um council was very nice um to provide us with a mobile camera unit and ranger and that all that behavior stopped literally within hours of that camera being removed um though that fence was booted down again and it pretty much started all over again so yes i appreciate that thanks for coming along again no i'm worries. sorry you're experiencing that i know how frustrating it is and also uh, it sets the dogs off in the area it's yep. frightening when you're at home by yourself it's bad enough for young people like you but for elderly people that are mm. isolated at home uh, hearing that sort of commotion all night is not ideal i'm not certain what we can do about it but yep. i appreciate you bringing it to the uh, attention of the full council tonight uh, and I encourage you to keep speaking to local police. Report every incident. Yeah, police do. attendance is based yeah. on the number of reports they receive. Mm -hmm. If people go, oh, someone must have reported it, I'm not going to ring tonight, mm -hmm. uh, they just don't come. Yeah. So they collect data. Keep yeah. reporting it. Cool. Be that squeaky wheel. Thank you. No, my pleasure. Thanks for speaking so eloquently. Uh, we have a, a mover, obviously. We also have had a seconder. Thank you for speaking on the matter. Uh, let's put the matter to the vote. Can I have a show of hands? In fact, what I'll do is I'll get uh, anybody spe uh, voting against it. No one against. Uh, then I take it that all would be in favour and the matter would be unanimous, but I'll ask for, a ra for you to raise your hands. It's good exercise. Thank you, everyone. I think we have a count there. Thank you so much for that. Um, we have at item 6.4 motions from the floor. If anybody wanted to actually put a motion to council tonight, I know generally speaking it does take some consideration. I invite you to do that uh, this evening or alternatively, thanks, Max, I'll come to you in just a sec, or alternatively, of course, you can contact your local councillors or just ring me directly or email me during the week. I'd be happy to speak to you. Um, Max. Max Zeller. Yeah. Apology um, accepted. <laughs> yeah, so I submitted these just before the meeting. So the first one's with regards to the dual-use path or the completion of the dual-use path network around um, um, Canning River um, Regional Park. Have um, we can I just ask governors, have we received these? Have we, can we put it up on the screen? I can't see behind me. Yeah. Uh, are we able to put that up on the screen for the benefit of the people that are here? Excellent. Okay, yeah. Max, what I'll do uh, for starters, I'll ask you to please read, um, just read the motion yeah, in its entirety yeah. and then just stop. So the motion is that the city um, work with the Department of Transport to develop a design for the dual use, oh sorry, the shared use path behind um, Canning River Estate, connecting the existing paths on Watts Road and Bywater Way. You're as talking Wilson? Yeah, Wilson, Wilson yep. Yeah, as shown in the long-term cycling network plan and the cycling and walking plan. Thank you. Do I have a seconder from the floor? Seconder, Sean, thank you. We have a seconder. Appreciate that. Thank you. Max, I'll just get you to speak uh, uh, quickly on it if you don't mind. Yeah, just briefly. I mean, this has been on an agenda item for the Wilson Ratepayers residents for quite a while. Um, in fact, it's over 15 years in my <laughs> since, since uh, um, I worked to raise this. Um, as most of you would appreciate, um, the Canning River, um, um, Canning River Regional Park is a yeah, um, very nice facility. Um, um, the dual use path goes around the majority of the, um, of the park. Um, in the area of Wilson, um, it stops at the Castle Dare development, so I believe there is plans as part of the Castle Dare development to um, complete it from what is Fern Road through to Bywater. And then from Bywater, there's a missing section from Bywater to the bottom of Watts Road um, Lake, and then, um, oh sorry, Watts Road. Um, and for those of you that um, aren't familiar with the area, um, a path was done some time ago from the bottom of Watts Road through to what is Riverton Bridge Park or um, Low Key. So, so it basically the proposal is to join the dual use path from there, um, and then ar around the. Uh, uh, joining the um, boundary of the regional park to connect through to Bywater. Um, now, this proposal has actually gone to the residents. I mean, we've had it as a ratepayers plan for quite some time. We've only ever um, received, you know, um, um, support for it. There's no one been against it. So, yeah, there's been a lot of consultation locally, and yeah, 
I appreciate you considering that. No problem at all. Thank you. Um, can I just have a show of hands, so those in favour of the motion? Thank you. Those against? Thank you. The matter's carried. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you, Matt. Yeah. Okay, the second one. Sorry, there was two. <laughs> Again, I'll just ask you to read uh, the motion yeah, to the yeah. meeting, please. Yeah. Um, the second one relates to uh, one of the local parks in Wilson. So the um, the motion is that the city um, install a pedestrian path at um, Cody Park in Wilson to improve safety and access to users of the playground. What was the name of the park? Um, Cody. So Cody. Um, yeah. C O D Y. Thank you. Can yeah. I just have a seconder, please, for that motion? Seconder. Thank you, Colette. Ms Bishop is the seconder for the motion. Max, I'll get you to speak quickly. Yeah, I'll just talk briefly to this. Um, we've been very impressed with the ratepayers of the work that's been done about um, upgrading their um, playgrounds in the area. So, yeah, th th this is just another one that's come through from the, from the Residents Association. So, yeah, please ask you to consider it. Thank you. Uh, appreciate that. Uh, just a show of hands, so those in favour? Uh, thank you. There's no need to show those against. The matter's been carried. Thank you very much. Mr Zeller, are there any other motions from the floor? Thank you. We'll then close off. I'm going to go back uh, just an item. I'm going to ask uh, Miss Aretha to come forward. And I apologise for missing you earlier. I'm, I, uh, I'm not sure. I didn't see you up the back there. I'm going to go back to questions from the floor. And I'm just going to reopen it now. It's 7.21pm, uh, uh, just for the benefit of you, thank you. I'll ask you just to uh, uh, provide your name and uh, address, please, yep. for the sake of the record, and ask your question. Sure. Myself, Mrs. Haritha Damishati, and two by thirteen Pollock Street, Bentley. Uh, just a, a question: like our street word is never cleaned. I think when I came here around four years back, it was clean, but now it's not that much clean. If you pass. Chapman Road near Kulgadi Street, that side, it's really neat, and Bentley is really dirty. I don't know why, that much difference. Are you talking about like debris on the street, like just yes. sand and like a, what a street sweeper leaves, would normally leaves, pick up? Leaves, yeah, leaves and everything. Like roads are dirty, words are dirty. It's like green, not greenery that much. I'll just ask the question uh, directed just in relation to street sweeping. Are we doing uh, the same amount of street sweeping or how often do our street sweepers uh, street sweep, sweep streets? <laughs> yeah, Mr Mayor, we can, we can deploy this, this street sweeper upon request to any particular street uh, to address any localised issues. You just need to get in contact with the city through uh, our website or uh, give the city a call and we can arrange that. Since Ms Aretha is here tonight and has provided um, her address, which is Pollock Street in Bentley, are we able to take that as uh, received from tonight? We'll get a street sweeper out to your street. Thank you. And at the back of our house, there is a Wabini Park. Wabini Park. It's a big park with cycling and everything. It's really nice park, but it's not clean, that one also. Stamps, leaves, and we can't sit on the grass. It's this is the park? Yeah. The park itself? You think the park should be uh, kept in better condition, is that what you're saying? Yes, of course. Which park is it? It's a Wabini Park at the back of... Director Bo? Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. That's, what are you, uh, what are you doing out there, Director Bo? Uh, What's going on? <laughs> Not a great deal by the sounds of things, Mr Mayor, but um, unfortunately that park isn't under the care and control of the city. It's uh, the Department of Communities Park. So um, we will um, raise uh, your concerns with them directly. So that's one of those uh, strange things where that park is not under our control. We don't actually do the maintenance out there, as Director Bo uh, explained to you. So we will touch base with the Department of Communities and see what can be done. But uh, uh, we'll see what can be done. <laughs> but the street sweeper is on the way. Yeah, please. All right. <laughs> and one more question. Uh, yes, of near course. Near Pollock Street. I know I don't, I, there are some houses. If the buses are going, they are throwing some stones or something, they are playing on the street, we can't go, we are going the other way. It's really very hard. I mean, 
around 10 to 12 Which feet. street is this? It's a Pollock Street only. Pollock Street? Yeah. You're saying that the, uh, you've got buses going along Pollock yes. Street? You're saying that the road is not wide enough? No, wide enough. Yep. Kids are playing on the road. Kids are playing on the road? Yes. Stop your kids playing on the road. How come I can say to them, their, their parents have to say, I don't have any rights to say them, they're just standing in the middle of the road. And but, but what's your question? I mean, how to control, I mean, they are almost 12 to 13 kids to whom I have to complain. I don't know. Uh, I'm not absolutely yes. certain. Director Bo, you got an answer to that one? You've done pretty well so far. Do you want to give it a go? To whom I have to complain? I, I would suggest um, that reporting that to the police as well, um, or, or to the Public Transport Authority as well. Obviously, I, I'd assume the bus drivers would be reporting that as um, antisocial activity in and around that area. Um, but maybe even our, our rangers as well. That's the only thing I could offer. We'll keep an eye on it. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll ask the rangers to include that on their patrols. I know they would anyway, uh, but there's not an awful lot we can do. It's not within our remit. But uh, look, I appreciate you raising it tonight. It's obviously a local issue. I've got to, I've got the CEO in my ear. CEO? You can call CEO. No, I <laughs> don't have time to. I don't have time. But thank you very much for coming thank along. You. Thank you for your okay. time. No, my absolute pleasure. Thank you for that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are almost at the end of our evening. Uh, I really hope you've enjoyed tonight's meeting. I certainly have. Um, uh, we're up to item seven, which is closure. So uh, I wish I could talk all night, but I can't. It's uh, 7.25, and at item seven, closure, I want to thank you for your attendance. And before I close, I want to thank you sincerely. We've got more than 20 people here tonight, and that's a, a tremendous output for, uh, for a, a meeting of this type. We, we have had meetings we're talking before. One year, we had one person turn up. It's a very lonely meeting uh, and a lot of work goes into it. So uh, I really appreciate you coming out today and actually seeing your council in action uh, to actually get to meet uh, your mayor and your councillors are all here today and to listen to your director speak. Sometimes uh, public officers cop an awful lot of flack from their communities, but I hope you can see tonight we're just human beings like you we're working really, really hard and doing the best we can. Uh, and I've really enjoyed chairing tonight's meeting. So thank you very much for coming along. Uh, stay safe, uh, travel safely home. Uh, and enjoy 2023. I hope, uh, hope you all remain uh, safe, healthy uh, and in good spirits for the remainder of the year. That being said, with no further business on the agenda, I do declare tonight's meeting closed at the, so at the time being 7.26pm. Uh, Thank you and good night. <laughs>